I'm here in Edinburgh to talk about a, a book I wrote based on my teenage diaries, which is a really bad book to write. I don't recommend doing that to anybody. Um, and here I am <laughs> talking about it over and over and over again. <laughs> The last time I did this festival, every day they would come to me and say, what tickets do you want? And surely you're intelligent and engaged enough to want to see this and this and this. And we were just so into the Sainsbury's and, and, and the, the little old ladies and, that we were shopping next to and the fact that there's BBC on TV all the time. My answer was always, well, we have these really nice grapes back at the flat. <laughs> And, and did you know that BBC is on television <laughs> 24 hours a day? <laughs> I, I'm really bad at going to see other people's shows. It's sort of a busman holiday for me. <laughs> the difference between performing at a book festival and a music festival is um, that you can go to bed early at a book festival. <laughs> it's not all that different if you believe aesthetics are aesthetics are aesthetics maybe an age group difference, at least over here. Uh, and the, the interviews I do tend to be a little more on the therapy side and less on the, um, you, your art is outside of you. Um, but I, I really have enjoyed the opportunity to be articulate uh, uh, and to be learning. This is, I've only written one book and I didn't know how to write that. so I. It's sort of refreshing to be the person who doesn't know what's going on and to be surrounded by people that I, I would like to learn something from. I'm reading a book by the archetypal psychologist James Hillman called The Soul's Code. Um, he's a lecturer who used to lecture with my father who's, um, who lectures in philosophy. Uh, and this particular book is, is very readable. Um, it's, an, it's the idea that we, sh we live our lives backwards um, the, as in the acorn holds the code to the oak tree and it's about our callings. It's about how they can be found in our childhoods and how we need to forgive children for their idiosyncratic behavior because they're the acorn. Sometimes a little branch will burst out of the acorn and you have no idea where it came from, but we need to be patient with that because it's, it's going somewhere. And I, I've had a lot of struggle with my calling and so th this book is really good for me. It's like you know, talking to one of my dad's friends about why the hell did I do this and how did I let this happen? And it's just because of the guitar, all of this had to happen <laughs> just because of a piece of wood. <laughs> the only book I think that has genuinely changed my perspective is Natalie Angier's The Beauty of the Beastly. She is a New York Times science writer and this is a collection of articles from the Science Times but she's she's strikingly into anthropomorphism and she believes even cells should be infused with human projections and it's a lovely way to write about science. I realized that it brought together two aspects of my perception that I had always struggled with before, thinking one opposed to the other, um, humanity and science. And one is not hot and the other cold. They actually are exactly the same thing. I took four years to write this book. It was essentially a book that was already written. It was a diary, but it was one that made no sense and it was quite esoteric <laughs> initially. For two years, it was a book that just sucked. And then for two more years, it was a voice that I had to let fly. Um, but not the way lyrics fly. Lyrics are just, they puke themselves out. For me, anyway, I, I hear them as an instrument of phonetic melody. And when I try to sing lyrics that are wrong, they stick in my throat. I feel like I'm lying. And it's not until they, they spill out that I know I'm telling the truth because I'll often mishear them to the point where I'm singing lyrics that rhyme with the correct lyrics, which is dumb. <laughs> um, 
and I, I almost got to that point where the book was sort of flying, but uh, it has nothing to do with my throat, and it has nothing to do with listening to what's in the ether. I'm just trying not to lie, so maybe they have that in common. <laughs>